Hello there, welcome along. This is another tutorial from tipsquirrel.com. Now I should remind you that I'm not a Photoshop trainer, but I do like to pass along any tips and tricks that I find along my travels. Now I wrote about this one back in March, April time on tipsquirrel.com and it was a bit popular, so I thought I'd redo it as a tutorial. And I'm going to make some graffiti. You can see that I've already got my tag here, a uh, nice tippy, and I'm using the font most wanted that I've got from defont.com. You can find a link to that on tipsquirrel.com under fonts on the right hand side. Okay, so let's go. I've got a nice blue tippy here, but what I want to do is I want to make it into a nice gradient. So over to the gradient colors I go. And on the gradient tool, this is actually the one I'm going to choose, but I'll show you where I got it from. And it's imaginatively titled Blue, Red, Yellow is the one that I'm using. Okay, now click on that and you can see I've got my colors that I'm after. And I'm going to come over to my layers palette and hold down the control key. And holding down the control key and being over the icon for the tippy text, uh, now you can see that the hand has turned into a selection. And that's telling me that whatever's on the layer, I'm going to select. And that's exactly what I want to do. So I just click on there and you can see that tippy is now selected. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call this layer color. And then with my gradient tool, I'm going to go from one side to the other. Now that looks okay, but I perhaps want a bit more blue and a bit more yellow. So what I do then is I start further in, so it has to fill it in with more blue and then stop more yellow. But actually, nope, don't like that at all. So more blue, less yellow. So I go over the, the Y and it tries to put the yellow where I haven't got a selection. So there we go. So I have finished with a nice goldy color. That's what I want to happen. Okay, control D, I'm happy with that, to deselect. Now I'm going to add a outline to that, a uh, stroke. So double clicking on the layer will bring up the layer style palette and I click in stroke. And I want to change it from that ghastly red to a black and make it fairly chunky. Okay, and the opacity can stay where it is, that's cool. And I click OK. Now what I want to do here is I want to make it look a bit more sprayed. But to do that, I'm going to have to blur them a little bit. So using a little trick that I wrote about a little while ago on tipscroll.com, where you can find more about it there, I'm going to come up to the layer and then layer style and create layer. Now if you watch in the layers palette, when I click on that, you can see what happens. And what's happened here is it separated the outer stroke from the color layer. So I can actually use that independently. I've just held down the old key while I click on the eyeball and that will just bring up the one layer. And then you can see I've still got my, my color layer and my stroke, but the stroke is a full layer. Okay, let's put them all back on again. So on the color layer, I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I want to give it about um, my one, about two-ish pixels, I think, maybe a little bit more. There we go, about three and a half-ish. And I click OK. But now I can also do the same to the colors outer stroke layer. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And that's far too much. That's probably playing with your eyes. I apologize for that. We're going to go right the way down. Just so it just takes off the rough edges a bit. And there we go. So now we've got a bit more of a blurry spray type effect going on. Now I want to put those back together. So I'm just going to uh, control and click on the color layer away from the icon, obviously, so, and then push control and E and it joins them back up together. Now it does mean that I won't be able to alter my stroke at all, but there we go. We're happy with it. So it's no problem. Now I join them back up together so as I can go back into layer styles. And in here, I'm going to put in a drop shadow. Now, rather than play about with the angle and the distance and what that, I'm going to come over onto my document and just position the drop shadow where I want it to be. And I want it just quite over to the right a bit and down, give it quite a bit of depth. And I quite like that, I think. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And I click 
OK. So there we have our nice layout. I'm going to move that over just a bit. Click on the Move tool and move it over a bit more central. <clears throat> Excuse me. OK. Final bits and bobs. I'm going to change this into a smart object. Now, you don't have to, but uh, it does help incredibly if you do. So layer, smart objects, convert to a smart object. If you've got it earlier than CS3, then uh, you're going to have to just keep your fingers on Control Z for the next lot of uh, instructions. But making a smart object makes this a lot, lot easier. OK, so with uh, my color layer, because it's all on one now as a smart object, I go Filter, Render, and Lens Flare. One of the few times I use Lens Flare, and you can see here is Put It On. I can just click anywhere I like to position the Lens Flare, and I'm going to put one up on the top of the T, and that's a bit bright for me, so I'm going to take it down. I'm using the 35mm Prime, and I found for this particular image this works the best, but by all means have a play if you're doing this yourself. OK, I'm down to about 70%. Yeah, about, about there. Yeah, about there is fine. And uh, click OK. Now, this is where the proof in, is really in the pudding because it's so difficult to control and see on this little uh, preview that it's clicking OK. You're going to find out whether you like it or not. And that's why having it as a smart object really helps because I can go back into it now and I can move it around just by double-clicking on the word lens flare. But also clicking on here, I can take down the opacity of it as well. So it just makes it a bit easier to control. And now that I've taken it down, I'm thinking, I don't like it there. Double click on lens flare, and I can pop it a bit further over in the line of the T, which is horrible. Don't like that either. I did point out last time that I am a fiddler. I do tend to fiddle and fiddle and fiddle. OK, there's my lens flare. I'm going to put another one on filter, render, lens flare. And I'm going to put one over here on the Y. Uh, make this one a little bit brighter, perhaps, and make it a bit bigger. Um, there we go. And again, now it's going to put it on the top, just as the layers go from bottom to top. So the smart filters go bottom to top. And I click on that. And I'm going to make it a little bit more to the bottom and to the right, if I can. Click OK. And then using this one again take it down 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 okay that's all right um and i can obviously add as many as i like now, using the filter menu it always puts the last filter you used on the top and because we're on a smart object i can use that it doesn't go into the last one that i used it creates a new one so that's cool um and i'm going to put one uh, just in the mm, just there perhaps um nice big bold one and then take down the opacity of that one. Take this right down, actually, to about there. Still not happy, but I never really am whenever I'm doing anything like this. OK, and I'm going to leave it there. So there we go. There's our graffiti tag done completely in Photoshop, all legal and above board.